Okay, let's clean a mixer strip from a Tascam 244. There's a light and a hardcore version of this. The light version is that we just kind of spray and lubricate all the pots and switches and the fader. The hardcore version is where, as is the case here, it's out of focus to work with me, there's loads of um, fluff and lint caught in here and it's going to obstruct the physical mechanism or we've used it and we know that there's cutouts or cr a lot of crackle in that fader. In that case what we're going to want to do is uh, pry the back off this. I did a similar thing on a on the fader of a 424 Mark III bef before and no doubt I'll do similar things on the other models of Tascam in the future. One of the things that's kind of nice about this, if you're not confident with soldering or don't own a soldering iron, is that you don't need to desolder this in order to pry it open. Because it's attached here, and this plate at the front comes off, then what you can do is loosen this plate. So basically, you can see actually someone's already taken those two, those two screws off. And then you take these washers off the front of these pots. This is soldered on at the side here with this back panel already visible. Then you can get into these tabs with like needle nose pliers, bend them straight. And then on those legs, that plate will bend back. You can open up the fader that way, get all the lint out, clean the little brushes that are on the underside of this. They're moving across the carbon plate here get all of them clean in a lot of time that will bring a fader back to life theoretically the carbon plate on here can wear out i haven't encountered that yet for me a dead fader has always been because either the little brushes on the underside of this part or the metal contacts at either end some liquid or some moisture has got in there and they've corroded to the point where the fader is no longer usable but i'm optimistic that this one with a clean is going to work fine our first sweep at this is we're going to take some kind of contact cleaner i'm using service Soul super 10 I've, I've, I've used other companies before and it's okay but you know this this stuff's good and it's not too expensive easy to get hold of in the uk or i should have some paper towels down here because i don't really want to soak this foam pillow that I do all my work on with contact fluid but anywhere where dust could get in because it's a moving part don't do this unless you've got some kind of like lubricant that you can put on afterwards right this is quite powerful stuff so like there's a, a grease that's put on these when they're manufactured that stops the metal rubbing against each other if you put a lot of that on there and then don't replace it with some sort of lubricant then that can cause problems for you as well if you're in that position you have this stuff but you don't have this stuff then skip the side of it you may not get it absolutely crackle free and you're going to be putting it in here instead But anyway, I'll continue as it was. So get everything here. And then basically there's holes on the sides. Much in the same way as there's gonna be a little brass. I'm saying brass, it's you know a copperish color um contact inside here and that's going along a carbon plate. These kind of pre-miniaturized um pots here are a similar sort of idea. You can see there's this kind of like burgundy plate that's going to have a carbon coating on it and then there's going to be a little brush attached to a spindle here. So we want a little bit of this juice in there to kind of swirl around. And so we just excite, excite, let's excite these knobs. Did I remember to put some inside this switch? It's just anywhere where there's going to be a bit of lint and grease could get in and the chemicals in this, together with a bit of friction, we're loosening that up so that in a minute we can blow it out with some compressed air. And if you're not doing a lot of this, then you're probably just going to get a can of compressed air. They're a few quid in the UK, so what's that, you know, a few dollars in US, I don't know what it is, in euros. I'm, I'm not in the exchange market really, but anyway. I've got this device that's for um, pumping up an airbed and chop the end off it. It just saves me buying loads and loads and loads of compressed air. So you may have blown a bit of the contact cleaner, your service hole or whatever onto that onto that PCB. If so, you can get, get in there with a paper towel, 
I've got these kind of foam massive Q-tips that are intended for a cleaning uh, printer, computer printer. And, you know, that's good for mopping up some of the excess. In fact, it, the stuff will dehydrate and evaporate, that's what I mean. It will evaporate if you leave it long enough. At that point, like I said, it's a little bit of a risk that these will be too dry. All of these things will benefit from some lubricant. Um, I know that Keg, their deoxid range includes many variants, ones specifically for switches, specifically for pots, specifically for faders. Honestly, because this bottle, which cost me like 25 quid, has got a needle for applying it. I mean, I was scrimping and I was like, well, I'll see if it works and all this other stuff. And it seems to. I just don't want to like buy loads of more bottles of at 25 quid each. I'm not saying that it's not worth it, but I'm, for one thing, I'm Scottish and, and we're like a naturally stingy breed. Uh, and for another, I'm, I'm, you know, just poor-ish. Only because I buy too many pedals and stuff, I guess. But anyway, I'm using this for everything. There are alternatives. There are more apposite um, products you could use, but I'm just going to use this for all of them. If I was all, this was all I was doing to the fader, I would have sprayed the the gunk in there, given it a mix, blown it out, and then put this on the plate. I'm leaving that alone because I'm going to open that up. But with these pots, I'll put some on the lip of where the moving parts are here, but also into that gap here with these uh, dual pots. You know, because that's what's that? Is that the auxiliary bus so pan and gain for send effects so effectively you've got two rear stats stacked on top of each other and then there's two places where I'll want to put that lubricant a little bit in here in the switch so a little bit moving part there etc etc let's go time lapse and then once that's in there you want to agitate it again so that the lubricant is getting evenly spread across the moving parts. For the light version of cleaning one of these, that's enough. Um, you, you should find that process significantly improves the amount of crackle or cutout that you've got when you're using these. Um, in the next video, I'll pry that apart and clean it.